Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to Happily Holistic. I'm very excited to have Nick Pino here with us today. Hi, Nick. Hi, Amy. Thanks uh, so much for having me. I'm so glad you're here. So uh, Nick is known as the EMF guy. And when you read, I think it's probably good to clarify when we read your last name, we say Pino, but to those of us, I don't know, who are phonetic, it looks like Pinault. It so, does. Yes. Yeah, so just so, because I feel like if someone is listening to this, they might say, oh, wait, I have seen him because I was thinking it was Pinault until I read your bio and it says <laughs> like the wine. And I was like, exactly. oh, that's what it is. Yeah. So, so Nick is the EMF guy. He's the author of the number one bestselling, The Non-Tinfoil Guide to EMFs. And he's an advocate for safe technologies. And uh, I love your book. I read it and I reference it frequently. Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really comprehensive book. And in my book, The Healing Home, Your Room by Room Guide to Positive Vibes, it's in the resources list and I reference it in the text because you have so much good information in there and um, it's broken down in a really easy to use way. So I think it's really helpful. So besides that, Nick, I know you... Um, you have summits and you do a lot of interviewing of people. You have a podcast too, right? Yeah, the Smart Tech Podcast. This is really where I uh, I talk about the bad sides of technology, but also the good yeah. sides, like the healing technologies that use frequency. Good. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, and it's especially I think uh, many people are, are now recognizing that we can, we can use frequencies to heal ourselves, whether it's uh, yes. red red light therapy panels or yes. infrared saunas. This is Absolutely. frequency based healing. So uh, it's not just about the bad frequencies. So it, uh, let's say my podcast goes a little bit wider than my usual work, but uh, I like to talk about both because sometimes just talking about the bad news is a little bit uh, aggravating for people it's over time. Depressing <laughs> too sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I'm excited to listen to your podcast. I, I had just kind of seen that it existed recently and I was thinking, oh, I want to listen to that. So it's exciting. So let's dive right in since you brought up infrared sauna and we're going to talk about EMFs very soon. Uh, are there good options for us as far as using an infrared sauna and getting all of those benefits, but then not like having the EMF exposure? Yeah, when it comes to EMF, we need to, to, to think about uh, two things, the natural EMFs and the unnatural EMFs. And these are fundamentally different. We have, uh, we have evolved as a species and all of biology has evolved next to the sun. Uh, the sun emits a wide array of visible and invisible frequencies. And, you know, if you uh, put a plant uh, in a pot and then you put a tarp over it, it dies. So plants need mm -hmm. the sun. Human beings need the sun also. And we know how protective vitamin D is. So now I think that the new discourse on the sun is changing a little bit after decades of saying, oh, don't go in the sun at all or yeah. you're going to catch cancer in reality is go just enough, right? You don't yeah. want to burn, 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 and then expose yourself to all that oxidative damage. But the reality is when you develop a healthy tan and healthy levels of vitamin D, it is how human beings thrive. We also Absolutely. are exposed by so many frequencies on the planet Earth that are natural. For example, the natural magnetism that is emitted by the planet Earth. And if you're completely disconnected from it, for example, there are studies on this with uh, Russian astronauts where they put them in a bunker underground, but the bunker was completely shielded from the Earth's natural frequencies. And rapidly, they saw problems in their mood, in their sleep wow. cycles. And right. they realized that there's even, uh, you know, of the circadian rhythm that uh, drives our body to act certain ways at certain times. The circadian rhythm is really what makes you wake up in the morning with a surge of the mm -hmm. cortisol hormone and makes you sleepy and drowsy in the evening with a surge of the melatonin hormone. So these two hormones are kind of driving our, uh, our uh, awake cycles and our sleep cycles, if you will. Well, mm -hmm. that circadian rhythm is also based on the magnetism of the earth that has a fluctuation mm -hmm. in, uh, on a 24-hour basis, but also with seasons. So long story short, these frequencies are yes. natural. So when we use um, infrared saunas, for example, or red light mm -hmm. therapy, these are technologies that use frequencies that 
have been shown to be beneficial to human beings. Even the PEMF technologies that I've been studying very recently, the pulsed electromagnetic field therapy right. has benefits to it. It's a it's a, basically a huge magnetic field that uh, can heal certain body parts or even, he, uh, even heal uh, stubborn uh, fractures that the non-union fractures that will not wow. heal. So there's benefits from certain uses of those frequencies. There's also the bad frequencies and they're not necessarily all bad because the frequencies, for example, from your cell phone that communicates between your cell phone and the tower well, it's not all, all, all bad in your life, is it? You can connect to social media, you can stay right. in touch with friends and relatives. So for sure, there are benefits, but a lot of people are underestimating the harms that can come from that technology. And the main reason that these frequencies are chaotic to the human body is that they have not been designed in a way that, that is therapeutic, unlike the infrared panels and those mm. therapies. The, in, on the contrary, they've been optimized for telecommunication purposes. So we want, I want my iPhone to be faster, to be more reliable. I want to download that video in a second instead of five seconds, right? These days, mm -hmm. we're, it's always about faster, 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 and more connectivity. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's been designed without taking human health into account and really with um, safety limits that are extremely, extremely permissive. And since 2011, the World Health Organization has classified that radiation emitted by your phone or Wi-Fi routers or Bluetooth uh, headphones or anything Bluetooth really uh, as a class 2B carcinogen. Uh, so mm -hmm. it, it is just the start of the scientific understanding that these devices are Unfortunately, they're really the new smoking. The difference with smoking yes. is with smoking, when we realize that it's a carcinogen, well, at least people have the option to stop. And now mm -hmm. there's a lot of recognition that it's very hard to be addicted to smoking and people get help and they stop and their health is usually improved mm -hmm. as a result. With cell phones, it's not like everyone can just stop tomorrow morning. So not right, really we, optional anymore. It, Internet exactly, is not optional. It's part of life. So yeah. my message is not a message of necessarily eliminating our use of uh, these EMS, but of minimizing their impact that it has on your life. So what are the, those impacts, right? It's mm -hmm. mainly the number one, I could say, is a loss of sleep quality. And we know that sleep Daytime. is so important. It's important for your blood sugar regulation, for your hormones, just for your overall energy, overall longevity. When you have sleep deprivation, everything goes south. And over time, it can really, really harm your health. A lot of people sleep with their phone. A lot of people sleep, uh, fall asleep. Yes. Uh, maybe they're, you're scrolling Instagram at night and then you fall asleep, you feel drowsy. You just set it there on the, on the nightstand oh, right next to your head. What most people don't realize is that that phone is not sleeping, right? It's just downloading things, downloading updates, downloading text messages. And maybe you put it on uh, silent mode. I hope so, so you can yes. sleep. However, the fact remains that you are still exposed to this radiation. And one of the mechanisms that researchers think might be at play here is that your melatonin hormone is being suppressed by your phone Absolutely. in the same way that it is suppressed when you look at screens. And it, it's not just that I want to look like Bono with these glasses for people uh -huh. listening to the video version. I have yellow tinted glasses that look kind of, I don't know. So I guess some people they in Hollywood would- They look kind of rock star. Yeah, kind of rock star. Yeah. So this is blue blocking glasses. And the reason I wear those is to minimize my exposure to my screen. And I realized that yeah. for me as an author, I can concentrate better and I don't feel as uh, as much eye strain at the end of mm -hmm. the day when I wear those. And plus they look kind of bizarre cool and they're a yeah. conversation starter. So that's something. Yeah. But in the end, I'm blocking frequencies that are visible. With cell phones, they are not visible, but the fact remains that these have an impact on your body. One of them being, um, let's say, causing a stress at night and reducing your ability to sleep soundly. Absolutely. I do wear the red light, uh, or the blue light block glasses that are very red at night. Oh, I do I also at night. Yes. I like right the bed. idea though of um, the ones for the screen because also as a writer, we're just on the computer all the time. Me you too. Know? Yeah. yeah <laughs> Guilty. I mean, yeah. We just are. And it exactly. would be good for a day, but to still not interfere with mel melatonin protection like you're talking about, you know, yeah. another, another, I'm sure you know this hint tip, but another thing is to get actual sunlight 
into your eyeballs before noon, ideally before 10 a.m., to jumpstart melatonin production later in the day, too. Completely, yeah. And a lot yeah. of people don't realize that if you stay inside, you're not getting you're getting some frequencies for sure. If you're, it's, uh, this room is entirely, well, I have this red light. I don't even know if it shows a little bit. No, it I have a red light here at home that shows a little bit. And I try to have just red lights or amber, um, yeah. let, let's say more on, on the yellow to orange side when it comes to light bulbs, because it's yes. a little bit more natural. But yes. those, the, those um, basically the sun rays go through the windows, but they're partially blocked, especially yes. the UVs. So you actually do not tan through windows, at least through modern windows, That's and you're not video. getting the full spectrum. So yeah. that, this is why if you go outside, you okay. get the natural frequencies. Yeah. So when it comes to EMFs, it's a matter of doing both, getting more natural frequencies and reducing your exposure to the unnatural frequencies yeah. that are a stressor to your biology. Yes, I love that. Um, and you live in a city, right? You're like yeah. in a more urban area. So for those of us who do, how do you, how do you um, minimize the exposure that we don't want? And then also, I guess you just go outside even though if you're in the middle of the city, it's just not a park. But tell yeah. us a little bit about both sides of that coin. Or sure. Uh, well, in, in urban the, areas. and the, the reality is this, if you live in the countryside and it, depending on the situation, you might be close to a cell phone tower, but let's say mm -hmm. in a situation where you're not, you're not really close to neighbors, levels of electro pollution, if you will, the unavoidable pollution created by everyone using routers and phones and cell towers mm -hmm. will be much, much, much lower. And so is usually, or in most situations, air, better air quality and yeah. less stress. So it's a choice to live in a city. And I, I love a lot of things about the city and just being cool to being able to go to the grocery store. It's right next that the next block yeah. I have the grocery store and the butcher shop. And I, I love that urban lifestyle. But the reality is that the electro pollution levels are going up and up and up in Big cities time. and all along with light pollution, along yeah. with smog, along with many stressors. So it is, um, it is increasingly a priority for you if you want to stay healthy and live in a city to minimize what you can control when it comes to electro pollution and other things. But let's say um, when it comes to air pollution, for example, if it's sunny in Montreal, but they say smog alert, and that, that mm -hmm. happens in Montreal, unfortunately, from time to time. It's not as bad as certain cities, but it's still... Uh, a big concern. So you can might you might go outside and not realize you're breathing in all these chemicals. Well, when you go back inside the home, why not filter this air, right? So yeah. that's one way to do it. Same thing with your water. You can filter it. When yeah. it comes to EMS, it's not as much as filtering it as lowering the levels inside your home because you are in full control of what's inside your home except in certain situations, maybe you're renting the place and things like that. Yeah. But most in most situations, you can control things, uh, especially your personal devices. So when you carry those personal devices on your person, make sure they're on airplane mode or make sure that you do not keep that phone in your bra. No, bad news. No. In, your, in your yoga works. pants. No. Yeah. In your pockets. Bad news as well. And yeah. there are a lot of people who don't realize that the studies around EMFs from cell phones and fertility are very decisive. They will yes, they harm are. fertility in men. And then in women, there's also indications that it might happen, except yes. women get one set of eggs for life, whereas men can, re can renew yes. their fertility after 60 to 120 days, whatever yes. this is, it's very fast. So we get away with things, but women do not. So yeah. do not put a phone or a personal device that emits wireless right next to your body over time. Uh, the biggest harm to your health could be a long-term tumor. And we know Absolutely. it's a, it's a potential carcinogen. So do not take chances, but that's one way to reduce exposure because I see a lot of, especially men keep the phone in their pocket, even they while do. they're, they're working at a computer, not even using the phone. It's just there. It's just sitting there. Right. Yes. So that's, avoidable exposure. And this is Absolutely. really what you want to focus on. Another common example is the Wi-Fi router. A lot of people keep it open 24 seven. They don't mm -hmm. think twice about it, but the reality is that machine is saturating your home with electro pollution. That's what Wi-Fi is. If you yeah. can pick up Wi-Fi in a room, what does it mean? It means that the signal is reaching there and bouncing around the room. So 
it is something that is a convenience. However, for sure, you do not need it at night uh, while you're sleeping. And this is also, it happens to be at night that your body is more susceptible to its um, stressful effect. Mm -hmm. So what can you do? Well, you can simply turn off that machine at night, turn off the Wi-Fi router. Don't be afraid. I I know some people have emailed me and said, well, will my router break if I I I disconnect it? And, And they're almost... Some IT companies will tell you or, or telecom companies, oh, no, don't unplug it because mm-hmm. it, it might harm the router. They're, they're almost they saying say that. that nowadays, but it's fine. I, 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 I've done it for years every, mm-hmm. uh, every night, and that's fine. And you can I've unplugged you, mine for years, too. Yeah, exactly. So And you can put it uh, on a timer, and that's a, a good practice yeah. to just set it and forget it, like a Christmas light uh, uh, yeah. outlet timer. And yeah. that's good practice because again, you're you're getting eight hours or you should be getting eight hours of sleep. Most people aren't, but they're getting six, seven. But anyway, these hours that you're spending, you want to maximize their efficacy. That way you're going to be better able to handle life and all the stressors. And Absolutely. we know that modern life is, is very, very difficult. There are so many responsibilities, so many things. So for the time yeah. you are sleeping, you want to maximize your sleep quality. So just unplug that router at night for sure. Absolutely. And the, I have the eco router, which I read about in Nick's book, um, which uses firmware. So it's not constantly emitting the signal. Instead, it can sense when your device is trying to connect and then it sends its signal out. So I think the stat on the um, literature with that eco router says it's a 90% reduction. Yes. Um, yes. And, and there's also a simple button to turn off the Wi-Fi function, for example. So there's, yep. there are certain yeah. um, upgrades to equipment like this that I think mm-hmm. are just, this is how routers should be, right? <laughs> All the well, routers. It's more logical than just exactly. you know, saturating everything 24 hours a day. Well, and for people who, ma- who, who care about the environment, I do. I know mm-hmm. you do. I know people listening to this exactly. probably do. So why are we emitting these signals 24 seven, even when no user is connected? And that's, that's a decent question on a, on a, on an energy consumption standpoint, it is very wasteful. And unfortunately at the moment, this is how technology is being built. So Mm -hmm. we have to ask for safer technologies, but also, also healthier technologies for the planet. It, It is also part of it. And telecoms, you might not realize, but it is a big energy consumption to have yes. cell towers and whatnot. It is, in fact, a big uh, slice of the energy consumption for the country is through telecoms. I can't, I can't recall what the percentage is, mm-hmm. but it is tremendous. And with 5G, those is. latest, those new networks, yes. it's even more energy hungry. So yes. what should we do? Well, you should also minimize the time that you're spending on your mm-hmm. phone. And I think that this message is not a, just about EMS. It's also about getting control Mental over health. your devices, yes. right? Just your health. If you look at your device, like the average person that I think is, it's it's almost every minute nowadays. Oh, I, know. Uh, I really doubt that you're as productive and as present and as happy as you could be. So yeah. it's also a matter of uh, making sure that these devices are a tool and not your your master, right? Exactly. Kind of driving your life exactly. and making you always in fight or flight looking at the screen. So it's exactly. it's also something to consider. And conditioning you to go for that dopamine hit every second. Yeah. Did someone like this? Did I get a text? Did it do yeah. this, this? Did I acquire new information? Dopamine, dopamine, don't just conditioning us like really to be dopamine hungry all the time Completely. instead yeah. of being able to slow down and self-regulate. I, um, I remember when I was first out of college and I was working as a teacher and I lived in a rural area. And so I would drive an hour every day back and forth to go teach. And I liked it where I lived. It was good. And it was a while ago, it was a simpler time. And, um, (laughs) it really was, I mean, we had cell phones, but you weren't, you didn't look at them. They didn't have, you know, Mm -hmm. social media. I don't even think we had social media yet. And I remember I would get to a point sometimes where I would think, wow, I have a song or songs playing over and over in my head from the radio. And then that week I would just turn off the radio and drive in silence. And then I would get mental quiet back. I don't think we have mental quiet anymore because of all of this. Yeah. It's changed so much in like 15, 20 years. 
So, yeah, and I can tell you um, uh, a fun uh, anecdote about uh, when I went to Florida last uh, September mm-hmm. for the Upgrade Labs conference. It's a big, big biohacking uh-huh. slash yeah. holistic health conference. And I gave a presentation there, but uh, my um, my friend and colleague, Brian, had brought this special tent organized yes. with also the company Sana Space. And that tent was completely shielded from the nice. outside signals from the conference. Yeah. So we, we called it the EMF free zone and people entered yes. the tent, we closed the curtains and yes. it was it's a special type of curtain that can block radi- uh, radiation from cell phones and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And that is woven with silver thread. So yeah. it blocks all signal and inside you can bring an EMF meter, which is so, uh, a sort of meter that can detect radiation and it basically goes to zero. Yeah. I remember a lot of people entering that tent saying, oh, it's quiet in here. But it uh-huh. was the same level of sound because you could hear the conference, but it's a type of quiet yes. that is very, very calming. You feel grounded, you feel present. Yes. And it's true that for people that are really uh, tapped in and, and um, longtime meditators, for example, or people who do yoga or mm-hmm. Qigong or, you know, th- they are able to tell when they're in nature, in the middle of nowhere uh-huh. with no signal, they say, okay, everything is much smoother. It's oh, easier to, time. I don't know, to, to just calm down your body. And this yes. is the increasing level of stress we get in cities, whether it's the traffic or, um, well, with the pandemic, everyone was in yes. fear and whatnot. You kind of feel that energy, yes. but also the electropollution is also contributing increasing. to another layer of stress. Yeah. It's stress on the body. It's, it's mental stress. It's all of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I definitely, I personally aspire to go live in the wilderness like soon. I'm really like heading in that direction because um, for that reason, because I do feel that noise, you know, that sort of non audible noise myself. Yeah. Um, I read about the silver threaded curtains and the tents and this and that and some of what I've read so for for our listeners that would be something where if you were wondering like for example if you live you know in an urban area or where there's going to be other people's signals and and, uh, cell phone towers radio frequency towers in the area you might be thinking how can I get a sleep bubble that's less EMS so I've read about the, the silver threaded sheets and the tents. And then I've also read some things that are talking about how you might not want to just put that up without having a building biologist in, because if you don't know what's coming in from, from around you, you might be amplifying it. Yeah. I, and generally speaking, what do you I think? recommend, yeah, yeah I recommend, see, yeah, exactly. Seeing a building biologist or EMF yeah. mitigation specialist. And the reason is simple. Um, you have to know what you're doing. And Mm -hmm. if you are yourself an engineer or a building biologist, you can probably do it yourself, but it is hyper-specialized work that requires special meters. You got to know, for example, where are the signals coming from? Where Mm -hmm. are they coming from, from the neighbors? If you live, I'm on the third floor. So maybe the neighbor has a Wi-Fi router underneath and it plays a role. So in the end, if you want to create this, this bubble of no EMF signal, which is something we do recommend, especially for people that are very sensitive or just looking yeah. for long-term health, uh, you can put a bed canopy. So a, a sort of, yes. it looks like a mosquito net, if you will, yeah. over the bed. Uh, it's not my favorite solution personally, because I don't think my wife would love it because this room <laughs> would look a little bit bizarre, right? It's yeah. not the best when it comes to design. So if, if that's not an option for you, you can choose to paint all the walls with special you paint. Can paint it, huh? You can paint yeah. it with, and it, it's a carbon-based paint mm-hmm. that is completely black. And then you put a primer over it and then Ooh. normal paint over it. So okay. in the end, you enter the room and you don't see a difference. It's just Ooh. that the room will be completely shielded. And that's, let's say, wh- that's what is said. That's a nice idea. Yeah, it, it, it is a neat idea. And in the end, it, it's something that some people will think will think is a little bit extreme, but it's merely coming back to nature, coming back to yes. normal. Because yes. in nature, we don't have these signals around. So you're not trying exactly. to do something futuristic or bizarre. You're just <laughs> trying to emulate being in the middle of the woods right. of the grid and trying to emulate that level of calm in your vicinity and your, in your sleeping area. So that's always a good so- solution. It's a little bit more advanced. But increasingly, we see people who are uh, functional medicine doctors or just mm-hmm. health influencers in the holistic movement who recognize these dangers. And when they get yes. a shielded room, 
none of them regret it because mm -hmm. all of them can say, okay, wow, I sleep yeah. better. And I, I would argue per personally that investing in a shielded room would be just as good as getting the best bed and mattress uh -huh. ever available. And these exactly. are very expensive. A shielded room would be in fact less money than getting the best bed because yeah. I know some people spend tens of thousands on like bedding oh, and, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea because I, I've researched that for myself, the canopy, and then it would need the mat. And is it going to trap the frequencies and you don't know? And it's a lot to figure out yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, some people, I guess, use a, sh a grounded sheet that plugs into the ground of the building. But then I've also read if your building isn't grounded and you're, say, you're renting, you don't have control over that, then you might be getting feedback back up into your sheet. So it's a lot to um, sort. I love that Nick's book does uh, lay things out in a really a really straightforward way. It's very logical. It's not too dense, but it's tons of info. And I like also how you lay it out with like no cost, low cost, and some cost so we can see our options. Um, and one of the things you also talk about in your book that I'd love for us to touch on before we close is the concept of dirty electricity, what it is and how we can also mitigate it and why we would want to. Sure. Yeah. Dirty electricity is, is not the wireless. It's a different type of EMF, but it's basically the fact that our, the electricity running in your walls is usually it's supposed to be at a certain frequency. In North America, it will be 60 hertz, so six, mm. 60 cycles per second. Okay. And in Europe and most of the world, it will be 50 hertz. But that's not important. Oh, they won't be at, okay. in the homework. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Basically, what is happening nowadays is that with cheap electronics and how all the electronics and electric devices that are plugged in your home are built, they're built in a very cheap manner with electronics mm -hmm. from China that basically doesn't filter out certain frequencies and they put dirty frequencies on the line. So instead of having 60 Hertz, if you, if you plug something called an oscilloscope in the wall that building biologists use, they look at the electricity and normally it will be smooth like this. Mm -hmm. What you see with dirty electricity, it is like this. It goes all the way with a lot of spikes. So these yeah. are high voltage transients in the, let's say the industry speak, and these should not be there. So on an energy consumption standpoint, every time you have spikes, the when you plug your fridge or you plug a toaster or right. you plug anything, it is less efficient because it's not getting the 60 hertz it mm. should. So first of all, all your machines will heat up more rapidly, kind of losing energy through heat and also will run on more electricity than they should. So that's number one. Dirty yeah. electricity creates greater power consumption. The second yes. thing it can do is be a stressor to the human body. And there's fewer studies on dirty electricity compared to cell phones and let's say brain tumors, but the data is still um, uh, loud enough that certain scientists are sounding the alarm saying, we should probably filter it out just in case. And what they see is that in certain people uh, that are more sensitive, they see a big difference when they reduce dirty electricity. In kids, for example, they've done experiments in schools and when they put special filters that reduce the levels of dirty electricity in the walls, kids were calmer. When they removed mm -hmm. the filter, the let's say the symptoms yes. uh, of agitation came back. So mm -hmm. for kids already predisposed to ADD, ADHD, um, it might be something that is very, very calming installing days at home. So you have different brands. You have the Green Wave uh, filters. You have uh, the Stetzer filters also that exist. There are several competitors in that space, but the ones I use at home are the Green Waves. Mm -hmm. And what I like about dirty electricity is that it's fairly easy to mitigate. So mm -hmm. you can measure it using a special meter that the uh, that you could purchase from Green Wave as well. And then you have plug-in filters that go in most rooms in your home, and then it will bring down the levels. Uh, mm -hmm. This is, let's say, the very easy consumer-friendly yeah. version to do that. If you're exposed to tremendously high levels of dirty electricity, which can happen in cities, in in large buildings mm -hmm. where you have a lot of neighbors or even the power grid is already polluted with dirty electricity, yeah. then there are other solutions that you can install at your breaker panel. And this will filter uh -huh. out 
what is coming into your home. And just, just the way that the tap water that you get from the municipality is not necessarily clean, it can be tainted with different things. Yeah. The electricity that you're getting from the company, the, uh, the uh, electric company, yeah. is also not clean. <laughs> so we're getting electricity yeah. that has been already polluted with all sorts of voltage transients. So you can install these solutions like from uh, mm -hmm. one company in the U.S. is called SADIC USA. S A T I C SATIC and SATIC yeah. does um, the Power Perfect Box and other products that are a little bit more specialized and a, a bigger investment, but you can install yeah. them with the uh, the help of an electrician, and it will clean out dirty electricity coming into your home and most of the dirty electricity in the home. And you can also add in a few filters. So that's another layer of yes. protection. And a lot of people feel calmer and feel like their home is a, is a healthier place to live in when you reduce dirty electricity. And yeah. the reality is that if you live in a, a city and even in the countryside nowadays, the dirty electricity levels are also going up. So as mm -hmm. if we needed more stressors in this lifetime, right. uh, but unfortunately, even the electricity is becoming more stressful to our bodies over time as we uh, start plugging all sorts of things in the power grid, including yeah. cheap electronics and whatnot. Absolutely. And one of the things I think you mentioned in the book too is, the act of just unplugging everything when you're not using it. Like I unplug yep. lamps instead of turning them off, you know, that I, and I learned that from your book just to kind of minimize that. And it, it, that's related, right? Like that's the yes, same it, dirty electricity coming into the environment. So we're not bringing it in. Yeah, it, right? it's both the dirty electricity and the electric field. The 60 both. Hertz itself, just the electricity yes. can also impair sleep. And the, mm -hmm. I, I think the best evidence we have is in building biologists that do a lot of mitigation and people that are very, very sensitive. And, mm -hmm. and the thing is, I, I say sensitive, it's a bit of a misnomer. Some people yes. react more negatively, I can feel it, but yes. it does not mean that the people who don't have no problem with it, right? Imagine not consciously uh, aware of it. Well, exactly. Imagine someone mm -hmm. that say, I'm sensitive to sugar. I personally have, uh, my, my mom is a good example. She has I mean, she could have 10, 20 grams of carbs or, or sugar mm. or even white rice before bed and she will sleep or her sleep is completely disrupted. Yeah. So very sensitive to carbs and sugar. Yes. Uh, the next person might not be sensitive. Maybe I'm not sensitive. Doesn't mean that I can get away with eating infinite amount of sugar. Probably not. There's a certain amount that the body can handle, but it, generally speaking, as especially processed sugar, it's not necessarily something that you need as a nutrient, right? Especially right. processed sugar. Right. So right. the same thing can be said for EMS, minimizing it regardless of how you feel it's impacting you will help. It's like yeah. reducing the amounts of pesticides on your food. You yeah. don't need more pesticides on your apples. No one needs, yeah. it's not a nutrient, it's not useful. Yeah. It's just useful to grow the apple. But if you can get away with uh, having an organic apple instead or something very clean, very local, well, do it. So it's really a yes. matter of minimizing your exposure. So going back to your lamp, if you unplug the lamp near your bed stand, you're yes. also reducing the amount of electricity that is coursing through your body at night. Mm -hmm. Now people realize, but most people uh, in sleep areas have two to three volts, uh, like these, these nine volts battery, you have two or three volts running to your body. That yes. is essentially a small, a low level electric shock that you don't feel. Mm -hmm. Nearly everyone will not feel that signal. But if you remove that signal, if you remove that electricity and you sleep in the woods and you go mm -hmm. camping, a lot right. of people say, oh my God, I have it's such so dreams great. and I mm -hmm. sleep so great. Part of it is also the fact that just being around electricity is in itself a stressor and something that can impair your sleep. Absolutely. So much good info. We have to wrap up. I wanted to ask you about 5G too. Do you want to give us like one minute of 5G info and then we'll wrap up because sure. we have so many good things to talk about. It sounds good. Yeah, 5G yeah. is the fifth generation of wireless signals or cellular networks. So a lot of people on their phone have 3G, 4G or LTE and now they're connecting on the new networks called 5G. There's one study that came out recently that really proves the point that I've been saying for two or three years that people have been asking me about 5G. And yeah. it's that 
the average increase in radiation in areas where 5G is installed, I, I saw something like 20 to 30%. I cannot recall the percentage, wow. but it is increasing the global electropollution. Mm -hmm. So if electropollution was a problem prior to 5G, why are we making it much worse? Yeah. And that's really the issue. This is what scientists are saying about 5G. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are, are saying hyperboles of how 5G is especially more dangerous than the last generations. And what I can tell you is this, there's no reason to think that 5G is safe. And that's a, an article yeah. by uh, Joel Moskowitz, PhD, who said exactly that. Why would we consider that 5G is safe considering all previous technologies were unsafe? We're so not. It's not, it, it's, yeah. it's not safer. It's not any safer. It's not been designed with human health in mind. And it's just making a bad problem worse. So that's yeah. the one minute version. That sums it up. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds like our, our punchline. And to quote the uh, subtitle of your book, Our Stupid Use of Technology, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's what it is. The non-tinfoil guide to EMFs. Something, how to reduce our stupid use of technology. What how to we, fix. How, how to, to fix. fix it. Yeah. And we're going in the wrong direction, it appears, in societally. But exactly, we have a lot of tools and we will figure it out. <laughs> exactly. And it all comes, comes down to individually, how can you change your habits? And yeah. it's really, you can start tonight, turn off that cell phone, turn off the Wi-Fi yes. router and see how you feel. Oh, I mean, I couldn't sleep with a cell phone in the bedroom. Oh my gosh. I haven't for many years. Nick, thank you so much. Um, where do our listeners find you if they would like to connect with you? Sure. They can find me, all my resources, podcasts, courses, and whatnot at theemfguy.com. There you go. Theemfguy.com. I highly recommend Nick's book, The non Tim Boyle Guide to EMFs. Uh, I got mine on Amazon. Easy. You know, whatever we think about Amazon, it was very easy to get. And um, thank you so much for being here. I'm Thanks so for having me. To was, join us. It was awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you all for listening to Happily Holistic. Have a joyful day.